This video will be a short introduction to trigonometric identities. Firstly, I'll talk about what are identities. Then I'll go through some examples of trigonometric identities. Then I'll solve some problems involving those. So in case you weren't aware, there are things called algebraic identities. Uh, and you would have used these already in GCSEs. Um, so I'm talking about things like a plus b squared. Uh, so algebraic identities. And an example of this would be a plus b squared. And if you expand that out, if you expand those brackets, you get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And one way to show that it is an identity is to use this symbol. So it's an equality sign with three lines like that. What's the difference between identity and an equation? Well, an equation has generally one solution. Um, so for example, you might have something like x squared equals nine. Now, well, this actually has two solutions, but there are some definite solutions that will uh, fulfill that equation and make x squared equal to nine. So that would be negative three and plus three. Um, however, an identity should be true for all values of a and b in this case. Um, so that's what separates an identity from an equation. Um, so it should be true for all values of the variables. Uh, so I'll write that down. Um, and there are often some conditions. Generally, you don't want to divide by zero, for example. So often an identity will, will have a case where some values shouldn't equal uh, zero and things like that. But usually an identity will be true for all values of those variables, sometimes with some conditions. So trig identities, let's talk about some of those. So a common one would be the tan of theta equals the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. So that is a trigonometric identity. You can plug in any value of theta into this identity and it will be true, except for some. So can you think of some values of theta where this would be undefined? Well, that would be where cosine of theta equals zero. So this would be 90 degrees, 270 degrees, 450 degrees, etc. cetera. Um, so that's a case where we have an identity and there are some conditions in which it's undefined. Another well-known trig identity is the sine squared of theta plus the cosine squared of theta equals one. Um, so you notice I'm using equality signs and often this is the case, even though it's an identity, it will still use equality signs, but you will also sometimes see the identity symbol used um, to show that that is an identity. So generally I don't get too caught up in these words, this identities and equations and things, but it is important to know the difference between the two. So I'm actually going to go ahead and prove this identity here. And there are different ways of doing this. I'm going to do it using the unit circle method, um, but there are other ways to show that this identity is true. Um, so I'm going to draw a unit circle here and talk about the values of sine theta and cosine theta. So sine theta, if we take some angle on this unit circle, so let's draw a line out here, we'll have some angle theta and a point where that line crosses the unit circle. Um, it's a unit circle because the radius is one. So we know this length here will be one. And if we turn that into a right angle triangle by drawing a line down to the X axis, so I should label this and I should be better at drawing by now, but hopefully you can forgive my messy diagram. If we drew that line in and created a right angle triangle, uh, we could say the sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite side will be the y value and the hypotenuse is one. So in this case, we're saying sine theta equals y. Then if we take the cosine of theta, uh, that's the adjacent side. So remember, this is the angle I'm talking about. The adjacent side is this side here which is the x value of this uh, coordinate here. So cosine theta equals x over the hypotenuse, which is one. So cosine of theta equals x. 
And we know the equation of a circle as well. The equation of a circle, if the center is at 0, 0, which is the case for the unit circle, the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared. In this case, the radius for the unit circle is 1. Uh, x is cosine theta, sine theta is y, so we can write this as the cosine of theta plus the sine of theta squared equals 1, r squared being 1. Okay, so that's one proof of this identity, that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. And this should be true for all values of theta. Again, that is what makes it an identity. It should be true for whatever value you give to this variable. And then tan theta equals sine theta over cosine theta. Well, if we took the tan theta of this angle, it would be the opposite over the adjacent side. The opposite side is the y value, which we said is sine theta. The adjacent side is the x value, which we said is cosine theta. So hopefully you can see there that you can use the unit circle again to prove that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. All right, so that are two of the most well-known identities. Okay, so now let's talk about the different types of problems you might be asked to solve. So what do trigonometric identity problems involve? Well, often they involve a proof. So you'll be given an identity and you'll be asked to show that it's true. Um, so for example, I've done this one, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. Usually they'll be more complicated than that and they'll actually involve using these identities to prove the identity you're asked to solve. So I want to go through an example of that. Um, so for example, you might be given uh, an identity such as uh, cosine to the power of four, take sine to the power of four divided by cosine squared theta is equivalent to one take tan squared theta. Okay, you'll be given this identity and you'll be asked to show that this is equivalent to this. Now the technique involved here is to take one side of the other and then end up with the other side. So you're not solving this like you would an equation. Again, that's the important difference between identity and equation. You take one side or the other and generally you want to take the left hand side or the more complicated side and then simplify it to the right hand side. Um, so when once you're given this, so the question would say show that. Uh, start with the left hand side, so LHS for left hand side and then I'd write that out again and then think about how you want to simplify this. So what could we start with? Well, look at the different parts of the problem and look at what makes it complicated. So this cosine to the power of four and sine to the power of four, that's if you like the messiest part of that expression. Um, so I want to get rid of those powers of four. And here your algebraic identities come in handy as well. So we know that a squared take b squared, uh, that is actually the difference of two squares. That can be written as a plus b times a minus b, right? So that's an algebraic identity and we're actually going to use that idea here. Uh, so this is going to equal now the cosine, cosine theta to the power of four, that can be written as cosine squared all squared, right? So I might just do this in two steps so it's really clear what I'm actually doing here. Um, so I'm doing cosine squared theta all squared, take uh, sine squared theta all squared. And this is still all over the cosine squared of theta. And now I have this expression, right? I have something squared take something else squared. And I can write that as the difference of two squares. Uh, now I'll, I'll still have that squared exponent, um, but it's better than having a uh, power of four, right? So this is going to be cosine squared theta take sine squared theta multiplied by cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. And I hope you can see the connection between those two things. 
it does get confusing when you've got extra exponents, but I'm essentially using that identity there. And this is all still divided by cosine squared theta. And then look at the expression with fresh eyes, if you like, and see what else you can simplify. So can you see an identity that we've just been talking about in this expression here? So it would be cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equal to one, right? This is this identity up here. So now I'm going to simplify this to one. So then this will just be one times cosine squared theta take sine squared theta. So I'll just be left with this in the numerator. So this simplifies to one, right? This equals one. So now in my numerator, I have cosine squared theta take sine squared theta all over cosine squared theta. And let's keep simplifying this as much as we can. So next, this might be a good place to look back at your original identity and see what you need to end up with. So I need to end up with one take tan squared theta. Tan squared theta could also be written as, well, remember that tan theta is sine over cosine. So tan squared theta will be sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. And if I split this up into two different fractions, I'll have cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta, take sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. And this is equal to one, take tan squared theta, which is the right hand side. Um, so we can say then this is equal to the right hand side and we've shown that that identity is true. Okay, so that's an example of a problem involving trig identities. Let's do one more example. So example two, uh, let's do sine theta plus cosine theta all squared is equivalent to one plus two sine theta uh, cosine theta. Okay, now it's tricky to know where to start with this one because both sides are fairly neat. And generally, as I said before, you wanna start with the messier side, uh, but because I have this squared uh, here, I'm thinking this will be the side that I wanna start with. So I'm going to start with the left-hand side and there's no hard and fast rule to say, start with the left or the right-hand side, but it's kind of one of those things you get a feel for after you've done a few problems. Um, so because this is all squared, I want to expand these brackets out. So this is going to be sine theta plus cosine theta multiplied by sine theta plus cosine theta. And then if I expand those out, I'll get sine squared theta plus two sine theta cosine theta plus cosine squared theta. And then I've got this sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Well, again, I know that's one. So if I combine those two terms, I'd get one. And then I have two sine theta cosine theta. And then we're already at the right-hand side. So all we need to do then is say, this is equal to the right-hand side and we're done. Um, so that was a bit of a simpler example. As I said, this was just a short introduction to trig identities. There is a lot more to trig identities than these few examples. As you can imagine, there are countless different identities you could be asked to show or prove. And in this video, I was only talking about the functions sine, cosine, and the tangent function. So trig identities can also involve the other trigonometric functions that you might know of already. So in the description, I'll put some problems that you can have a go at. Hopefully this video helps you to solve those. And in following videos, I'll go into this in more depth. But hopefully this short introduction to trig identities was helpful to you. If it was, please leave a like. If you want to see more content, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.